In this GarageBand Creator Series video, I'll be talking about how to collaborate in GarageBand, record cover songs, original songs, and have a whole lot of fun along the way. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete and welcome to Studio Live today. And in this video, I'll be talking with someone very special, Mr. Ron Ward, all the way from Ho Chi Minh City in Vietnam, all about his work in GarageBand and how he creates using this amazing platform. Ron, how are you doing today, my friend? Hello, Pete. Hello, everybody. I'm doing fine. Excellent. Now you're in Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam, but people are probably looking at you going, that doesn't sound like a Vietnamese accent. Would you like to start by telling us a little bit about your background and your musical background, but uh, what you're doing in Vietnam, my friend? Well, uh, as far as my musical background, a uh, little bit of this and a little bit of that. I used to That's sing in the choir when I was a kid, uh, kind of like the Keith Richards story, you know, but then your voice changes and yeah. <laughs> they kick you out of the choir. Nice. But I, I studied a little uh, a little cornet, some horns and uh, some guitars when I was, you know, in my youth. And then I was in a band, just like a lot of people in my, you know, my 20s. And then, you know, I just kind of kept listening to music. And uh, now with the advent of all of this great technology, uh, I'm happily back in music and that's about all I do now since I'm retired. Uh, I'm retired in Vietnam. Uh, I used to work here when I was still uh, on duty, but yep. now I'm completely retired living in Ho Chi Minh City. Beautiful. What a, well, I couldn't think of a much better place to retire to. And obviously from, from the US originally, uh, from, from your accent, and I happen to know about Right, it. right. We, uh, we, we're we uh, buddies from the GarageBand Users Facebook group. So uh, a lot of folks here I know that are, that are on this channel, like the, the GarageBand Users Facebook group. And and Ron is one of our amazing moderators over there and does a, a fantastic job. He does a live show every week with his buddy or new friend, Brian Bigler, who uh, is your <laughs> collaboration partner, which is an interesting story. It's a teaser there. We'll be talking a little bit more about that as we go on through the interview here. But uh, so that that's very cool, obviously, like my most of us had that musical background, had that love of music. But uh, what about GarageBand? What 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 was it that got you in and started uh, taking you down the the recording path and recording your own music using GarageBand? I started getting back into music. I would say maybe three years ago, three three and a half years ago, and I had uh, you know a little set that I wanted to do in a live act, and I was looking for some kind of a drum beat. Mm -hmm. That was my deal. And I mean, I searched around, I got uh, Beat Buddy, you know, which you yeah. could use through my PA system. And that was cool. But I mean, uh, then it just hit me somehow, or I saw online that, you know, I, I had had the answer all along because I used iPhones and I had a, uh, an iPad and a Mac, all three. And so I just opened it up up and within a week or two it was like oh man here we go <laughs> and so it was really the drummer that got me into it and wanted to do a live act but then it got me into a whole world of recording wow that's that's very cool so you yeah you started out using with for, for a live purpose and needing that that backing track and i know right. a, lot folks, uh, a lot of folks use garage band for those backing tracks and then uh, you've moved into where you are now so uh, i happen to know a little bit about this and for folks that are watching here uh, i suggest that you check out we've got some links down in the comments here in the description where you can check out ron's youtube channel because you are known uh, and your performing name which is uh lay it on me uh, what do you and brian go under as your performing name well, our virtual band is Saigon Slick and the Boston Bard. Man. And I know that's a little bit long but and, and a little bit descriptive, but we, we're comfortable with it. I'm in Saigon. I guess I'm Saigon Slick, and Brian's from Boston in the USA. Uh, he's the Boston Bard. We've never met each other, but we have a virtual band, and we both use GarageBand to, to make the music that we uh, you know produce every week. Which is is just amazing, and and if you check out the catalog that that we have on the Facebook page and also the YouTube channel, there's uh, there's cover songs there. So you guys started by recording some covers, and then you you've moved on to actually writing and recording your own songs, and actually collaborating from opposite sides of the globe. We can say all using GarageBand. So talk us through a bit of the logistics of that. If if folks out there are listening and watching, and they're like, "Hey, I'd love to collaborate with someone, but there's no like local artist in my area, and I'd love to do some online." collaboration how does that work well i mean find a forum uh that will introduce you to other artists who 
could, you know, uh, collaborate with you. Uh, I've seen some collaboration going on on SoundCloud, mm. you know, uh, on BandLab. Uh, but of course, the forum that I use and where I met Brian and where I met Pete is the Garage Band Users Group over on Facebook, uh, GBU, uh, where you we have about almost 4,000 now. Have we hit 4,000 yet, Pete? Uh, we're, we're, uh, we're pretty close. Maybe by the time this video comes out, we'll be at 4,000. It's pretty insane. Right. But uh, about 4K people who could potentially uh collaborate with you and uh, there's there are uh, people who uh are in a lot of different genres and and things like that so uh get yourself a forum and um you know start putting uh some some things out out uh so that people can say i'd like to collaborate with this person Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and as, uh, as a lot of folks who watch this channel, or if you haven't, you can dive into the channel and find out, but collaborating using GarageBand is actually, there's a bunch of different ways to do it. You can, you can do live collaborations right there in your project file in iOS and in Mac, or you can, you can actually render out your files and send them out as WAV files and then bring them into projects. Right. So there's a heap, mm -hmm. heap of ways to do that. So, uh, yeah, obviously you and Brian have a, a, a lot of, co a lot of communications, lots of, lots of emails right. and messages going back and forth each week. I don't right, know. right. All right, what um, we do is kind of stay with inside the uh, the Apple way of doing things. I mean, GarageBand's in Apple. We both use Mac OS uh, primarily to, to make our songs. And then, you know, we share on iCloud, which works well. Yeah. There are other ways to do it, but the way that we do it is by sharing on iCloud. We share both uh, audio files and program files. We use the program files in uh, in GarageBand, you know, to, to really collaborate. Uh, Brian will send a, an initial song uh, consisting of the pro, uh, program file and all of his uh, guitar tracks. And then, you know, I'll listen to it. Sometimes we'll do some arranging. Uh, and then uh, I add the vocals and, uh, and the bass line usually. Uh, do some uh, some mixing and mastering all in GarageBand. I basically am still uh, right now mastering in GarageBand, although I'm kind of using some experimenting with some other uh, things. But I think that the answer for us is to kind of work within uh, the Apple uh, communication. We we even uh, you know use uh, well, and <laughs> we use Apple and Facebook because yeah. we talk a lot on Messenger. Yeah, and yep. Uh, and we talk a lot with uh, the group uh, within the Facebook uh, GarageBand users group. So those are the kind of, that's kind of the way that we communicate. Very, very cool. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, so a, a lot of highlights for you folks already. So you've been at about six months, I think, that you've been creating together and uh, you've already pumped out, I don't even know how many tracks, but a, a new track every week, it seems. So what's uh, what's probably your proudest uh, moment in terms of the songs that you've put out there and uh, you put out a bunch of covers, a bunch of originals? Which one, if, if folks were to listen to their first uh, Saigon Slick and Boston Bard track, which one should they listen to? Well, I think when we started to hit our stride and for talking about originals um it's probably uh you know uh let the rain come wash me down yeah that was a song where uh we had been doing covers together for almost a year yeah. and uh had toyed with the idea of doing originals because we could both kind of feel it coming and see it coming and then uh, brian just came out with this riff Mm -hmm. and sent it to, to me just as we had been collaborating with the covers and the lyrics just came out like that. Yeah. And um, it's a guitar kind of uh, heavy song with heavy guitars, but um, it wasn't too difficult to mix. And I, I felt like I got the mix on that one pretty good where you could hear everything. There was the, the correct amount of EQ on on each track, including the vocals, uh, enough compression, but not too much. And I thought that that was kind of the first one that sounded professional. So rain come wash me down. That's, that's the one. And then we've had, you know, almost a dozen after that. Yeah. So yeah. With everyone can, has something that, that I like about it. So yeah, if you check them out, uh, uh, and I can, I think you can tell that they're sounding better and better as we go along, just because we learn more, about oh, yeah. how to how to do it and, and that's what's a great thing and you know I've, I've said that a lot on this channel is that when you're producing and you're releasing music yeah, get your songs finished and the great thing that you and brian have done is since day dot 
you've been finishing songs and getting them out there, getting the feedback and a lot of folks, and you've shared them on different forums, on YouTube, on Facebook, you get the feedback and then you can go, okay, next time we mix, we can take that feedback on board. And next time we record, we can take that feedback on. And I know that from my view, every time I hear one of your tracks and see one of your tracks, uh, you do some pretty awesome videos, which will uh, folks will be able to see. I'll, I'll link that up there right now. In fact, if you click the link up there and also go down in the description, you'll jump straight over there, but watch the rest of this interview and then go and check out uh, Ron and Brian. <laughs> and Ashton, um, because we've got a couple more things that we want to talk about here. So that's all very cool. Um, now people probably want to know, you, you, you've said you're using GarageBand a lot. You're using it on Mac. You use it a bit on iOS. When you're creating in GarageBand, what's, what's the number one tip you'd have for someone? If you're just starting out or if you want to take your recordings up to that next level, what's your top tip for creating in GarageBand? Learn how to use the app itself uh, with its internal amps and compressors and uh, mastering, uh, you know, mechanism well yep. before you start using a, a lot of external plugins. I would say learn how to, you know, do those things. Learn how to mix in GarageBand uh, before you start adding a lot of outtake compression or amps and things like that, you know. That and, then when, and then when you do start to use plugins, use them to enhance your song because the the song should already be good in GarageBand before you start plugging in, in my opinion. Yeah, definitely. Now that's a, that, that's good advice. So make sure that, yeah, you're getting those basics right and making sure that you know how to use the software before you're going and enhancing things and doing different things in there. Uh, it's it's so good because, yeah, GarageBand actually has some really good stuff and the cost of GarageBand on your Mac or on your iPhone or your iPad, zero dollars, zero cents, zero pounds, zero euros. So yeah, you get, get to use that free software and then you can delve out. I think you're right. A lot of people jump into how do I enhance things before they got the basics down. So uh, that is very cool. So what, obviously, you know, you use your Mac and you use the, the you use GarageBand. Is there any other gear that you use? I know a lot of people like gear. And if you watch this channel, you know that you can make good music without a whole bunch of expensive gear. But is there any go-to piece of equipment that you use in a lot of your recordings that you would uh, send people towards if they're looking to up their recordings in GarageBand? Well, I'm primarily a vocalist, Pete. So, I mean, my top mm -hmm. piece of gear is my microphone. And I think a lot of people can say that. I think uh, a lot of people are also like me and have more than one microphone. But yeah. my go-to microphone is my Rode uh, NT2A mm. uh, condenser mic. And I use that for vocals and guitar, you know, acoustic guitar when I play. Um, but that's a, a good mic. That's my go-to piece of equipment for GarageBand. Excellent. And, and I think, yeah, that, that, that's the one thing that I probably recommend because uh, funnily enough, I did a video recently where I said, what's the, what's the one piece of gear that you would recommend that people upgrade first? And microphones came in pretty heavy. I mean, MIDI keyboards are good, audio interfaces mm -hmm. are good, but without a, a microphone that can capture your sound, whether you're a vocalist or acoustic guitar or recording your guitar amps or recording a, a, a clave or a, or a tambourine, you need to record that. As soon as you go out of that virtual world, a microphone is definitely a good piece of gear. And uh, Rode, the NT1A or the NT2A, uh, yeah, both excellent microphones. And Rode, an Australian company too. So, uh, yeah, thank you. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Supporting Australian manufacturing, uh, which is a good thing. So mm -hmm. very, very cool. This has been awesome. And uh, I'm sure it's been super inspirational for folks who have been maybe wanting to collaborate or wanting to record in GarageBand, not really knowing where to start, not knowing how to how to kick things off. I think uh, this has given people a lot of good information and good uh, direction there. To finish off here, Ron, uh, you, you've been making music for a long time. Uh, you've been recording in GarageBand for a while now. What's the best piece of advice you've been given about music creation or that you would give others about creating music if someone says to you ron i'm about to start creating music but i'm nervous to do so what advice do you give them oh yeah i would say start simple uh use your ipad if you want or your iphone to start simple because it's very easy to go over to a mac if you if you need to you know it's almost a lot of things are really the same so yeah. just open up the program and make your first track. And I remember when I recorded my first thing into my iPad, I was amazed. It's like, are you kidding me? Because I, <laughs> I started on a Tascam four track yeah. set player. 
<laughs> you know, back in the eighties. Yep. And I had been away from it for a while and I was like, are you kidding me? Can you, you can make one track. And then I realized you could make 32 tracks. <laughs> so I mean, just start with one, yep. uh, try to get that to sound pretty good, you know, and then just go from there, start making, making a couple more tracks and, you know, just go for it. Basically. Uh, that's the first thing. The second thing I would say, my second piece of advice is once you start recording and with a lot of tracks, keep your levels low. Mm -hmm. enough keep your levels low don't don't record with your input levels really high you know it took me a long time to learn that i don't know why but then uh, a member of of our garage band group over on facebook uh leif bork yeah he said hey man keep your levels at negative 12 or below and i'm like what <laughs> but then when i started doing that it makes it so much easier so you may not know what I'm talking about now if you're a beginner, but do that and later on you'll see it's right. <laughs> you 100% will. And, and yeah, th th those are two great pieces of advice. If you don't know where to start, just start, grab it, start mm. playing around. You can't break anything. You're just going to have fun and you're going to learn as you go along. And, and like you say, if you don't know about input gain and output gain and all these terminologies right now, you will learn that. You'll, you'll record your first song and then you'll hear it. You'll hear that clipping, that distorting, that over limiting, and you'll go, ah, Ron was right. I didn't mm. start it down and yeah i think everyone wants to turn it up to 11 and they're like that's not loud enough but mm. yeah leave yourself some room and some <laughs> over, some, have some overhead there because when you're yeah. mastering you need to come back and be able to boost it up you can always boost it up later but you can't exactly once, you, once you've distorted it's distorted for good you can't bring that sucker down so yeah Excellent advice there, Ron. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure having you here as part of our GarageBand Creator series. Now, where should folks head to catch uh, you and your music and, and your collaborations and your projects there? Go to our YouTube channel, uh, Saigon Slick and the Boston Bard. I don't think there's another one on there. Uh, <laughs> all of our videos are on there, uh, our originals and a lot of selected covers that we've done. Mm -hmm. uh, we just did a cover of the Rolling Stones' Wild Horses uh, mm -hmm. after our uh, original uh, called Hopeless Houses. Both of those are up there uh, for you to see on the YouTube channel, Saigon Slick and the Boston Bard, plus on uh, our Facebook page, Saigon Slick and the Boston Bard. We also have all those videos, so go check it out. Excellent. <laughs> those will be uh, down in the description. So you'll be able to link straight to those and in the comments there as well. So thank you everyone for watching here. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel and you like this sort of content, then please click or tap on the Studio Live Today icon that's going to be right up there in the top right corner. I've actually put two of the Saigon Slick and Boston Bar tracks in the links right down here. So you don't even have to go anywhere. You can click two songs right here and listen to those. Until next time, I'll see you next time. Take care, folks.